this is chapter 1.2 exercises 1 through 11. In this video lesson, I'm going to go over problems 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 and leave the viewer to work on the others. In fact, I really recommend that the viewer, before watching any solution, go ahead and try to work out the problem first and then look for confirmation or not in the replaying of the video. So just pause, work these things out sequentially, and then just move ahead and see if you got it right. Okay, the graph shows a function that models the value V in millions of dollars of a stock portfolio as a function of time, T in months, over an 18-month period. Here we have a graph of that function. On what interval is the function decreasing? And in the introductory video lesson part one, about 40 minutes long, we talked about turning points. In this case, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call TP for turning points. You have one here at this maximum value, and you have a minimum down here. So you have two turning points. Okay, turning point. So um, the function will increase up to or decrease up to a turning point or between turning points. On what intervals is the function decreasing? Now, one thing you have to do when you talk about intervals, you are talking about x values. Where, on what intervals? Where? They're asking for the x values. And how do you identify the x values? You go from left to right on the coordinate plane. And so on what intervals is the function decreasing? Well, we see that we are the function is increasing from 0 all the way up to, um, that looks like 3, doesn't it? And that's going to be like, uh, and then we're decreasing all the way down to this value here, which is 13. And so and it seems like it's only on this interval. So on the interval now, what kind of notation does it say to give for this? It does not. So I'm going to use the easiest one I can find, which can be interval notation, which is using brackets and parentheses on the interval starting at 3 and going in decreasing all the way down to at the time equals 13. And on what intervals is the function increasing? Well, really everywhere else. Okay, this space we're increasing between x equals zero and x equals three. Okay, on the interval. Let's see. On the intervals, zero to three. And also, I'll put a comma here. Looks like 13 up to 18. Now, there's another notation we could use instead of the comma. I know we're going to introduce in pre calculus, but we'll just call it a comma right now, or you can put and. Uh, next other problem, what are the functions domain and range? So domain is going to be, looks like they're using the letters T for your domain and V for range. So we'll say our domain, I'll put a D colon, uh, we'll just put 
we're going over an 18 month period between 0 and 18. Now, it may not be 100% apparent, but are these going to be brackets or parentheses? Well, brackets. In our range, again, we're talking about V. Well, our range, what is our minimum value? These are going up by 1, and between them we have 4, so that's going to be, these are going to be 0.25 each. So you're going to have like, uh, three fourths or 0.75 will be our minimum value right here and our maximum value is going to be V equals 3. And if you use 0.75 instead of 3 fourths that's perfectly acceptable and of course in, in uh, just for inequality notation if you use that, you would have t is going to be greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 18. And v is going to be greater than or equal to 0 0.75. That's 0 0.75 right there. Not too legible. Let me get myself a little more space. space and less than or equal to three. So so there we have it. Okay, next odd number problem we're gonna look at five and four and five are related to this table view. So uh, is P of N decreasing or increasing or decreasing explain the significance of this. So you're gonna have to analyze and then five, what is the end behavior of P sub N? And you're looking at the table value shows the probability for getting all fives and rolling a number cube in time. Well, a number cube would have like a die. And if you got, if you roll it once, uh, you're going to get one out of six. And basically, you're multiplying that denominator by six every time as you go. So these numbers are getting bigger or smaller. Well, smaller. So we will say uh, in our end behavior notation as what is our input value? As n approaches infinity, are we say uh, we've actually said in this book plus infinity? P of n approaches now. I hope you see that P of n is getting smaller. So are we approaching negative infinity? No, we are not. Okay, let's see this. Okay, you, uh, zero. You, what you did is you have one sixth, one thirty sixth. Okay. 1, 216. So you have this kind of looking relation here like this. So what is, so you have P of N and N. And so what is being approached? Zero. So that's going to be our answer to problem five. Okay, we're going to go to, uh, here's, here's six for you to, I guess, do by yourself since I'm going to do seven. Okay, seven. Uh, use the graph function fx to identify the function's special x, specified attributes. Find the function's average rate of change over each interval. And we identify the average rate of change as uh, I'm going to call it average rate of change equals f of b minus f of a 
over b minus a. And so we're going to just, what we have is just different things. On this first one, we're going to have uh, the first one we're going to call a, the second one we're going to call b. So what we have for this one, for part a, is f of b, okay, which is at x equals negative 2, and that's going to be 2, minus f of negative 3. When we go to negative 3, it looks like that's going to be 0 over negative 2 minus negative 3. I'm just going to put that in parentheses. So we're going to have 2 over negative 2 minus negative 3 is the same as negative 2 plus 3, which is going to be 1. So we're going to have 2 is going to be our average rate of change over this interval. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to do all of these. I'm just going to do A, C, and E and have you finish the rest of them here on B, C, and B, D, and F. Okay, from X equals 0 to X equals 1, well, again, if we say B is 1 and, and A is 0, we're going to have F of 1, which is negative 4, minus f of 0, and that's going to be negative 3, over b minus a, one, which is 1 minus 0, we have negative 4, minus negative 3, which is the same as negative 4, plus 3, which is negative 1 over 1, which equals negative 1. So that's going to be our average rate of change over this interval. Next, from x equals negative 1 to x equals 0, well, again, this time we're going to use identify b as 0, a as negative 1, so that's going to be equal to f of b, f of b at negative 1, oh, excuse me, 0, excuse me, at 0, that's negative 3, right? Minus f of negative 1, which is 0, And then we have uh, 0 minus negative 1. And so we have in the numerator negative 3. In the denominator, we have 0 minus negative 1, which is 1. So we are negative 3. Now, one thing that you have to look for to see if you're on the right track is look if the function is increasing over the interval, you're going to have average rate of change is going to be a slope of this line segment, at least for part A. And for part uh, C, it's going to be the slope of this line segment I'm now drawing. And for part E, it's going to be the slope of this line segment I'm now sketching in, okay? And so you'll be able to, to get an idea, certainly, if that, that rate of change is a negative number or a positive number related to if the slope of that line segment is negative or positive. So that's just a check. Okay, let's go on to number nine. Where's my number nine? Okay. Right, i got to stay right here on this page. On what intervals are the function's values negative? Okay. 
Well, our negative values are going to be found below the x-axis. So here we go, right? So I'm just boxing in below the x-axis in red. So that's where we're going to see the negative values. And we see that we have uh, f of x. Let me go ahead. I want to get a blue one here. Yeah. Okay. So f of x is less than zero. Yeah, it looks like when f, okay, where where uh, x is less than negative three. Okay, and also put comma between negative one and two. X is greater than negative one, two, X is less than two. So on these two intervals, and if we wrote this on interval notation, we would write that as a negative infinity up to negative three. Okay, and also greater than negative one up to x, is, x equals 2. Again, where you don't have a, uh, you're not specified what notation to write these in, you have some flexibility, inequality, interval notation. Uh, so you have some options. What are the zeros of function? That should be easy. Um, we have 11. We have uh, sketching the graph of this function. Now we did something like this in the video lesson uh, preliminary to this. I'll just one thing you can do on this one is you can make a table to just kind of sort things out. Okay, you can say uh, x, y, and of course it says. Uh, represents so this would be 1944 zero so 1944 is zero and then you can just go ahead like this uh, number of warheads from a zero to about so it says it says we had zero and then until 1958 which is going to be how many years later we increase to uh, 5,000. So that's going to be 1958 to 44. So 58 minus 44. What is that going to be? Is that 14? Yeah, 14. So 14 years later, so right here at 14, you're going to have 5,000, okay? And then you can continue on to increase your number of warheads, and you have a sketch. So just continue in that vein. Good luck, and as always, thanks for viewing.